thanks for watching Gnome Skull News. And today we're going to get into Big Ten expansion, possible expansion out west. But before we do, let's get into some more bad news. Some bad news for the Pac-12. Apparently the uh, two, uh, two executives that they fired in January have now filed wrongful termination suits against the Pac-12. Well, complaints, but I'm pretty sure that's going to turn into a lawsuit if it's not already. And they're basically saying that they were they made Larry Scott aware of the overpayment from Comcast. As a matter of fact, the guy who was handling the investigation for the Pac-12 was Larry Scott's personal attorney. So that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like they were a couple of scapegoats. And of course they were. You can see that crap coming from a mile away. And of course, Ion does a deal with the WNBA. That's a one less possible partner for the Pac-12. So <clears throat> it's not going good. And uh, Jim Williams came out on Twitter and talked about uh, Apple TV, that they were still very much interested in Pac-12. They wanted all the Tier 1 media rights. Well, of course they do. This is, this is what they've been wanting. They, if they're going to get involved, they want the whole damn enchilada, or at least the most valuable part of the Pac-12. Immediately, people start talking about, well, they could just license this to that, that to this. No, they may allow, <clears throat> as far as Tier 1, they're, they're going to keep all the Tier 1, football, basketball, you name it. You hear that, Arizona? Your best games, <laughs> basketball games, would be on Apple. Yeah, that, that's not going to fly. That's not going to fly with those presidents. You can't have all your tier one pure streaming, especially Apple TV. Maybe Amazon, but they don't want all your tier one. They want a game a week. Now, Mr. Williams also talked about that, you know, Amazon would still be in for a Friday night game. Well, they would be, but Apple ain't going to let them have a game. <laughs> that's not going to work. What, what are they going to do? They're going to have like, you know, Cal versus Arizona State, you know, Cal versus Washington State. They're going to have, like, the worst game because that's about all that's going to be left. But I do believe Arizona and Colorado and Arizona State, they pretty much know who's involved in, the, in whatever deal is coming. They don't like it. They're doing their due diligence right now, trying to get the support necessary to make the move. You know, let's dot all the I's, cross all the T's, do everything we need to do. And look, the only deal that there's going to be is a shitty one. All right, there's not going to be a good deal. There's not going to be a solid linear partner with a lot of your content. No. It's going to, you know, even if it is ESPN, it's going to be, you know, maybe some tier two and tier three stuff. And it's not going to be a lot. So it's not a lot of representation on ESPN. So... The Pac-12, that whole the whole TV deal is nonsense. Oregon, Washington, Stanford, Cal, they want to get to the Big Ten. That's what they want to do. So they're not going to try to aid or do anything about a deal until they hear about the Big Ten. So that's a nice little segue to get into Big Ten expansion. Now, Mr. Petiti has come on board, or at least he will be in May. His first order of business, really, is to try to get everybody on the same page. This is what I have heard from the uh, Locked On Big Ten guy, that little podcast that, that goes on over there. Some interesting tidbits he had. You know, not apparently not all of the presidents are on board with each other. They're, they're a little out of sync. It's nothing, you know, apocalyptic or anything like that. But especially when it comes to expansion, they're not all in agreement. Now, Kevin Warren, I think, freaked a lot of people out in the Big Ten. I believe he was wanting Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and Cal. He's wanting all the whole Big Four to make six teams all on the West Coast. That's what he was angling for. And a lot of those, some of those, I don't know how many, but more than one president was like, whoa, back up, back, we can't, screw that. You know, they, they were getting freaked out. It's a little too much for them right now. So they, they put the kibosh on Kevin Warren. And now, I, I don't know if it was something that Kevin Warren wanted to go to the Bears or he felt like, you know, if you're going to cut the legs out from underneath me, I want to see what's out there. Then the Bears job came up and then he went for that. I don't, I don't know how all that worked. 
But needless to say, not long after, we find out that Kevin Warren is going to the Bears. So in comes Petiti. So I think the first thing, his first action item is to kind of settle everybody down. And apparently that's what he's good at. He's a good leader. He's, a, he's kind of an even keel, a little bit more quiet of a guy. Uh, doesn't talk a lot in the media. He, he has an ability to make everybody feel okay. So I think that's his first job is to make everybody in the Big Ten feel okay. If anyone had any dreams of the, the Big Four of the, of the Pac-12 going to the Big Ten, that's not happening. Now, what could happen, and it could happen this year, later this year, is that the Big Ten do take two teams. Now, another interesting point from this locked-on Big Ten guy was that they, the Big Ten themselves, they want to see the Pac-12 deal as well. Because if they get a really shitty low-ball deal, let's say $20 million a year, $22 million a year, well, then they can take, let's just say, Oregon and Washington, for example. You know, it could be Stanford or Cal, but whatever two teams, oh, oh, you're going to make 20, 22 million in the Pac 12. Well, we don't have, you know, their offer, you know, what they would be willing to give them, it doesn't have to be 40 or 45. It could be 30, right? So they, they want to see what that number is, see if they can get them even cheaper. The rumor is that. You know, those teams would be willing to go to the Big Ten for less money, for far less than all the other teams make. You know, they're probably thinking 35 40 but if that Pac-12 deal ends up being, well, let's say, like I said, $20, $22 million a year, well, the Big Ten can say, well, okay, the hell with 40 or 35 Let's talk about 28 30 somewhere in there. And one brilliant point that was made on uh, Greg Flugar's channel, the peek around the corner guy, he had someone call in and said, you know, look, why couldn't the Big Ten, when they go to add two teams from the Pac-12, why wouldn't they call ESPN, see if they'd be willing to pay for that, and they can get a little bit of Big Ten content? The Big Ten doesn't have to pay any money for let's say Oregon and Washington, right? So I don't know how their escalator clause works. I know they have one. I'm not sure what it covers. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it works anything like the pro rata with the Big 12. Not sure about it. So I'm not gonna really talk about it because I don't really I'm not educated on it. I'm not in depth on how all that shit works. But would ESPN be interested in that? So I think the Big Ten would, because you got to think about it. The Big Ten has no representation at all with ESPN. ESPN is the most substantial sports partner you can have. Fox is the other one. Now, NBC is nice. Nothing against NBC. Nothing against CBS. They're not ESPN. College Game Day is a big deal. As of right now, there's no reason for College Game Day to go to a Big Ten matchup and highlight that for another network. That makes no sense. Not when they can go and do an SEC matchup or an ACC matchup or a Big 12 matchup. Something that they actually have the rights to broadcast and, you know, accentuate their own company. That makes more sense. But if ESPN, if you can work out a thing, you know, kind of like open up that TV package a little bit, add in a little bit of ESPN, all of a sudden, maybe a couple of times a year, whatever, the Big Ten get college game day. Now, I know Fox already has a big to-do, but it's still not on the same level as college game day. Let's just be real, it's not. And I think the Big Ten would value that. So, they get two more teams as travel partners for USC and UCLA, which I think everyone would enjoy, everyone would like that depending on who the partners are. A lot of fans, you know, they are, just don't want anything to do with Oregon. Some of them think, you know, Stanford and Cal is the best. Some people think Washington and Stanford's the best. You know, no one thinks Cal is the best. <laughs> but they are in the Bay Area. They are an elite academic university, so they're in the conversation. 
the locked on Pac-12 guy, you know, he still asserts that, you know, hey, the, the Big Ten would take Stanford if they get Notre Dame. Well, number one, they're not getting Notre Dame. Notre Dame's going to stay independent. They may stay independent forever, depending on what happens with the playoff. And I don't think in any universe, any world out there, that anyone tries to exclude Notre Dame from the playoff. They want them to be in the playoff if they can get in because Notre Dame equals ratings. The playoffs already make really good ratings. And if you can get a matchup with Notre Dame and someone else, who cares who it is? That's a big ratings pull. So they want that shit. So no one's going to block Notre Dame just to try to, you know, make them go to a conference. They're not going to do that. The NCAA isn't going to do it. The, the, the whoever handles the playoff mechanism, I don't. Well, whoever, whoever makes the rules of the freaking playoffs, no one's going to try to keep out Notre Dame. That would be stupid. And your television partners are going to pay out the ass, especially for the expanded playoff, the twelve team playoff. They don't want Notre Dame excluded. If they can get in, if they got the record to get in, they get they get in. They want them in. So if they always have an open door, if they have a good year, they can get into the playoff, then I don't see them ever joining a conference or feeling the need to. So let, let me just reiterate what I just said. The Big Ten, I think, is going to take two teams from the Big from the Pac-12 sometime this year. It's, it, I think Petiti could probably get that done. You get these guys on board and say, look, we're not going to add a shit ton of teams. You know, well, we do need a couple of travel partners with USC and UCLA. And I'm sure that if asked, and they may volunteer the information, USC and UCLA would like to have two more teams in the West Coast. So you're essentially traveling six times a year. You know, five of those don't have to go all the way across the country. All right, you can have, instead, three times a year, you're going all the way across the country. That's perfectly manageable. That's easy shit. If they add the two teams, that that would bring Big Ten to 18 teams. And they're not going to get Notre Dame. And they won't do any more expansion until the ACC thing uh implodes or waits till 2036 whatever the case may be they're not going to do any expansion until or unless they can get florida state maybe clemson maybe miami there's a lot of talk about unc i don't see unc ever getting into the big 10 yes they, they have the academics to get in you know like stanford like cal you could you know if you're talking stanford and cal why wouldn't you talk UNC? Well, UNC is a great academic school. I don't think they're on the level of Stanford or Cal. And a shit ton of these great, great academic institutions, a ton of them are in California. Stanford and Cal has relationships with all of them. So in a way, you know, you're getting that academic little little rub from all of California with Stanford and Cal. Who are you getting a rub with with UNC? Duke? Okay. Do you want to bring in Duke as a part as as a TV partner if you're the Big 10? Probably not cuz the football sucks and no one watches it. By the way, UNC it's a weird thing with UNC. They are probably the most overrated football team ever that no one's really paying attention to. But the media loves, loves to try to put squeeze them into a top 25 anytime they can. And they never do anything. They're not good. They're in a shitty conference, a shitty football conference, and they can't win it. I understand they get to a conference championship game, what happens? They get destroyed by Clemson. That's what happens. Because they're not on Clemson's level, not even close. Is that enough value? Because think about it. Stanford and Cal, they're in the Bay Area. One of the largest media markets in the country. 
UNC is not. All right, it's a respectable media market. Do you need it? If you're the Big Ten, you don't. You don't. You already got Maryland, who's in a way bigger market on the East Coast. Not that far. So you don't really need UNC's media market. You don't need their football, obviously. Their basketball is nice, but basketball doesn't pay the bills. Period. Their academics are nice. But to me, it's just there's not enough there. There's not enough there there. You can say Stanford sucks. When they're good at football, they're good. All right, they've been down, but they do put money into their program. They eventually get that sucker turned around, but it's just the barrier to entry for student athletes is really tough. You know, it's tough with Notre Dame too, but Notre Dame, they seem to have a better time of putting respectable teams on the field than Stanford does. What I'm trying to say is the Big Ten, they're going to be highly, highly selective with who they bring in. All right. If they're going to go below a blue blood and allow them in, there's got to be some really big reason for doing, for doing so. And they got to get an incredible deal. And all of that, and you got to have incredible markets. There's got to be a lot of... And, you know, good academics, all it's got to be everything. It really does. The Pac-12 can offer a couple of teams. Whichever ones, I don't know. Because the Big Ten's weird. <laughs> I mean, why UCLA when you could have gotten to Oregon? Or Washington? You know, or Stanford? I don't know. It's, it was, To me, it was a weird ad. But I understand... The blue blood status, the brand status of UCLA in basketball, I kind of get it. But still, in some ways, I kind of don't. <laughs> that's just, that's me. But I don't think the Big Ten is going to add a lot from the ACC. I think there's a small handful of teams, much smaller than a lot of people think. Because if they do go to 18, I don't see them going past 20. So that's two spots available. And they don't net and look the SEC have flat out said before they don't care if it's an odd number. They really don't. I don't think the Big Ten cares either. Everyone thinks, well, they gotta be at this even number. They don't. They the, the programs have to make sense. They have to slot in at the right number, the right time. And frankly, I don't know that UNC ever has a right number or a right time. Now, some of that I'm biased with is because, you know, I've kind of went a few rounds with some of them folks out there, some of them UNC assholes. And it's not everybody, but there's a, there's, I hear a lot of shit about Utah fans. I do. They ain't nothing compared to UNC or some ACC fans. Those people think the world of their shit. And I still don't know why. I don't know why. There's this lofty uh, uh, thought of UNC. I know it's a huge basketball brand. I know that. But damn. <laughs> Realignment, or when it, in terms of the two major conferences, the consolidation. You know, to me, UNC just doesn't fit the profile that everyone seems to think it does. That's, that's all I'm saying. Now, Miami, I think, fits it. You know, Florida State fits. Uh, Clemson fits. But no matter how you slice it, the pac 12s in a world of shit. And I know people like Jim Williams. I mean, seems to be a really nice guy. I think I put a smart-ass little comment on one of his tweets. And he tweeted back something positive. And I'm like, wow, man, you're you're a nice guy. <laughs> you're put, giving that much hope to the pac 12 You know, that's, that's a... That's a nice individual right there. And I think he's good-hearted. I just think he's wrong. I don't think they're... He's trying to soft soften the blow as much as he can. But the pac 12s in a world of shit. It's like, what deal is there to sign? What deal is there to look at? 
uh, deal with Apple. That's what it is. That's the most I keep hearing about is Apple, Apple, Apple. And if that's where your tier one is, how are you going to keep Arizona happy with that? H how is Coach Prime going to be happy with tier one, your, your entire tier one package on Apple TV? Anyway, that's all I got. And I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.